Hello dear students, welcome to the third part of the lecture on the development of extra embryonic membranes in chick and in this video we will see the development of Allen toys in chick. The Allen toys it uh, first develops late in the third day of incubation. Where is it developing from? It is arising as a diverticulum from the ventral wall of the hind gut. You can see. So, while we discussed the development of the yolk sac, we saw that it is arising from the mid gut. So, this is the yolk sac, the yolk stalk from which the yolk sac arises or the yolk stalk which is connecting the mid gut and the yolk sac. This, this is the foregut, this is the hind gut. You can see there is a diverticulum arising from the hind gut. This is the diverticulum. So, this is the allantois. So, allantois develops as a diverticulum from the ventral wall of the hind gut. So, we can say it is developing from the splanchnic layer that means it is developing from the splanchnoplure of the hind gut. So, this happens by the third day. And during the fourth day of development, you can see the allantois pushes out of the body of the embryo into the extra embryonic coelom. So, this is the extra embryonic coelom where it is pushing out. You can see the proximal portion of this allantois, it is now lying to parallel to the yolk stock. This is the yolk stock, this is the proximal portion of the allantois, they are both lying parallel to each other and uh, just caudal to it that means behind it. This is the anterior region of the embryo, this is the posterior region of the embryo, it is arising from the hind gut and so it is lying posteriorly compared to the yolk sac. Now it slowly enlarges, it starts to bulge. For a better understanding we will just have an enlarged view of the place where allantois develops. So, this is the mid gut from which the yolk sac arises. This is the hind gut from which the allantois is arising as a diverticulum. Here you can see this is the origin of the allantois as a diverticulum from the hind gut. Now, what are these layers? This is the ectoderm, lining it is the mesoderm. This is again the mesoderm. This is the somatic layer of the mesoderm and this is the splanchnic layer of the mesoderm. This is the endoderm. So, this is how the somatopleur and the splanchnopleure are arranged. Now, where is the allantois arising from? Allantois is arising from the somat, the splanchnopleure of the hind gut. Therefore, what will its walls be? So, what is this endoderm? So, this is the endoderm. What is this? This one, the darker shaded one, this is the mesoderm and the allantois is arising. So, I can say this diverticulum which will form the allantois is having an outer layer of mesoderm which is a splanchnic mesoderm and an inner layer of endoderm. So, the allantois which arises as a diverticulum from the hind gut is having an inner endodermal layer and an outer mesodermal layer and this mesoderm is nothing but the splanchnic mesoderm. So, unlike the amnion and the chorion which developed from the extra embryonic somatopleure and the yolk sac which also developed from some parts of the extra embryonic somat, uh, splanchnopleure. The allantois is not like that. The allantois arises within the body of the embryo unlike the amnion and the chorion. Its proximal part remains intra embryonic throughout development and what projects out is this vesicular region. It can be called as the allantoic vesicle. And what is happening to the allantoic vesicle? You can see a stalk. The stalk is called as the allantoic stalk. The fluid starts accumulating in the allantois. 
So, when fluid accumulates the allantois distends here. So, it is somewhat balloon like the terminal portion is somewhat balloon like and by the fourth day up to the tenth day you can see the allantoic vesicle this was the allantoic vesicle it is enlarging. So, it is enlarging from the fourth day to the tenth day of incubation and it is extending into the zero amniotic cavity. What is zero amniotic cavity? This is the amnion, this is the chorion, the space between these two was zero amniotic cavity. But what happens to this allantoic vesicle? The allantoic vesicle is growing, it is flattening and it is occupying the zero allantoic, I mean the uh, the zero amniotic cavity. So, it becomes flattened and it finally encompasses the space between the embryo and uh, it is actually surrounding the embryo and the yolk sac. It grows over through the zero amniotic cavity and it is now covering the embryo and the yolk sac. Now, what happens? this was chorion, this was amnion and this is now allantois which is occupying the space. You can see the there is a region where or, or there are regions where the allantois and uh, the chorion are coming together. Which all parts of the chorion and allantois come together? the mesoderm component of the chorion as well as the mesoderm component of the allantois is coming together because uh, when we discuss that in chorion the mesoderm is inner whereas in allantois the mesoderm is outer. So, for chorion mesoderm inner and for allantois mesoderm outer. So, they are now close together they are in proximity. So, what happens these two mesoderms but remember the mesoderm of the chorion is somatic mesoderm whereas the mesoderm of the allantois is splanchnic mesoderm whatever it is the two mesodermal areas they will come and lie together and uh, they will fuse together to form a single layer of mesoderm which will develop a rich vascular uh, which is richly supplied with blood vessels a vascular membrane which is called as the choreo allantoic membrane. And the blood vessels of chorioallantoic membrane lie just within the porous shell. So, they are lying within the just near to the porous shell and uh, this will permit EC exchange of gases between the blood and the air outside. Allantoic blood vessels are connected to the heart and this circulation continues until the chick hatches out from the shell. During hatching the allantoic circulation ceases, it stops and allantois will dry up and it gets separated from the body of the chick. So, that is what finally happens with the allantois. So, the allantois develops from the splanchnoplure of the hindgut as a diverticulum. First, it is in the form of a vesicle, later it grows into the space between the amnion and the chorion which is called as the seroamniotic cavity and uh, the mesoderm of allantois and the mesoderm of the chorion will fuse together and they will function as the choreo allantoic membrane. Now before winding up what are the functions of allantois? Allantois is an important and efficient respiratory organ. It serves as a reservoir of excretory products of the embryo. The allantois also helps in the absorption of a major portion of the albumin mainly through the vitelline circulation. The allantois circulation facilitates the absorption of calcium of the eggshell which is essential for bone and beak formation just like the chorion. So, these are the functions and this is how it develops. Thank you.